among the many things that you are, Ryan. You are very gifted and talented at fantasy football, which I am not. That's a, that's a, I, I feel like that's, I feel like that's a backhanded compliment. I met no. One of the things you're good at is fantasy football. It's like telling a woman, "I like that. I like that dress. It doesn't show your curves." Right? <laughs> <laughs> If you like what you see so far, hit that bell for more. You don't talk like that. I don't. After you hit that subscribe button, be sure to head over to sportscaster.com and also follow hashtag sports on sportscaster.com. Premiere episode will be Saturday, July 20th at 8 a.m. No, but I had mentioned on a previous episode because we're, we're, we're throwing out the idea of doing a hashtag uh, fantasy football league. And we're going to have a bunch of bunch of, uh, of the subscribers in it. Hashtag Nation is going to join in it as well. But I've mentioned on that episode that uh, two things. Number one, I am intolerable when it comes to fantasy. Oh, football. God. You're terrible. See? You know. <laughs> the other thing is I can't determine. I can't separate real and fantasy. Oh, yeah. I can't. Yeah. Cause, like, That's a difficult thing to do. I can't do it. It is. And yeah, it's tough to do. If, if you could be my therapist for the next 20 minutes <laughs> and let me know why can't I do – what are the things that I miss? Like – well, first, we all value players differently. Oh, God, so, you did not. <laughs> in terms of separating reality from, in terms of separating reality from, from fake, is fantasy football, it, fantasy football is strictly about the numbers, right? So when, when you're the type of guy who, I, I know you have that argument frequently, Montana versus Brady, yeah, right? Yeah. And people point to the, the stats, and that's their only basis of argument. Yeah. Those guys are really good at fantasy football. Because okay. in fantasy football, that's all that matters is okay. the stats, right? right. Philip Rivers is a stat monster. So, <laughs> he is. But do you want him leading your team if you're making a Super Bowl push? Probably not. Probably not, if given, given the other options, right? Yeah. So fan- Philip Rivers is a fantastic value fantasy football quarterback as long as you have somebody that can back him up in the week's you know your playoffs and Super Bowl because he's gonna he's gonna crap the bed for you eventually. But week sixteen, he's awful. Yeah, so I mean it's it's all about knowing the stats and understanding that every league's gonna be different because in the league that you and I are in together, well, one of the leagues that you and I are in together, it's a full point PPR league, right? So points per reception, which means huge. It, it's it's a huge difference, which means running backs and Jarvis Landry's of the world are so much more valued <laughs> yeah. than any almost any other guy out there because they get one point every time they catch the ball. So for a guy like Jarvis Landry, who gets 149 targets, mm-hmm. he's a stat monster. Yes. So he's a guy that you target in a, a, a PPR league as a wide receiver one. But when yes. you think of Jarvis Landry in real life, there's not a, a team in this in this league where he's a number one wide receiver. In terms of, if you think of wide receiver one, right? Yeah, he, yeah. He's not the type of guy. He's not a Julio Jones. He's not, you know, those types of guys. He's, you know, he's a guy that's going to go out and he's a slot guy. He's going to catch you some, some decent balls and, you know, he's, he's going to do what he does. But so you've got to try to figure out, okay, what does my league dictate? What does, what does uh, you know, is it a league where we play three wide receivers or two wide receivers? Because that's going to change the type of value that you look to draft. It, you know, because if it's a three wide receiver league, you're going to draft wide receivers earlier because you don't want to be left with the scraps when it comes to your third wide receiver. You don't want to be picking a wide receiver 90 as your third wide receiver, <laughs> right? Because that, that's going to that's gonna lead to, to, to a lot of problems. So it's it's understanding the league that you're in, understanding the people that you play against, right? So I've in the league that you and I are in, we've played with these guys for quite some time. So I kind of know some of the tendencies of, <laughs> of who they're going to target and who they're going to willing, be willing to pay money for. That's pretty so I know who to drive prices up on and I, you know, and things like that. So <laughs> the people who struggle in fantasy football are the people, um, well, and, and let's, let's be honest. I mean, you won the league, what, two years ago, three years ago. Cause, I, two, cause Kevin's repeated two years in a row. I, so three years ago, I you Toronto won the league. Raptor, right. The league, yeah. So yeah. you won the league three years ago. So give yourself a little bit of credit, even though I won't give it to you after, after today, but no, I t- hey, hey, believe me, it took me winning a fantasy football title to realize how lucky it is. Yeah. Oh with, yeah. With, with some of the things that you do, but those guys that are in the finals every year, yeah. There's got to be some reason. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, just before you get to your point, yeah. I was listening to Double Nickel Zero the other day, and Psych Mope decided to go, is what we refer to him, I am. But anyway, um, <laughs> we call him Psych Mope and the Bullfrog. But anyway, um, he goes, he has the, he had a dream that he had, like, the sixth overall pick, and he was going through it, and he said, oh, all the big running backs are gone. 
All right, that's the first thing that happens. All the big running backs are gone. He said he was then going to draft with the sixth overall pick, Travis Kelsey. And this is a standard three wide receiver, two running back. Uh, and then he said he said something that was just completely stupid in my mind. He had a 12-team league. He said he plays two quarterbacks. Oh. And I'm like, there's not enough. Well, so if you're in a if you're in a 12 team league and you're, you're playing a two, two quarterback, quarterback league yeah. and the first six picks all the running backs are off the board, your league's playing it wrong. Because if you if you're playing in a two quarterback league, your first round pick should be a quarterback. Oh no no, there was a it, that, that was a separate discussion. He oh, said, gotcha. he, said okay. he had a dream okay. in the one league that he was playing in. Gotcha. But then he was talking about a two quarterback league. I love two quarterback leagues. But or, I don't or at like least it a with super flex. Teams. Or at least a super flex. I mean, it's it's skill, right? I mean, at that point, it comes down to there there is a, a bit of skill that comes into it because there's 24, there's 32 quarterbacks in the league, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, so two times 12 is 24. I mean, you know, I know you're a math teacher, so you've got, I mean, you've got enough guys. Are there enough good quality quarterbacks? No, I mean, Lamar Jackson's going to be a starter for somebody. You don't have enough, even, right? You don't. It's three. It's 36. It's a two quarterback it's league. Three, it's three. It's 36. Yeah, it's two quarterback league. But you got to think about buys. Well, yeah, you need to draft three you quarterbacks. Need to draft three. Sure, there's sure, not, sure. So there's four teams that, that aren't going to have. That, a, and that's why a lot of teams, and that's why a lot of leagues have gone away from a, a pure two quarterback to what they call a super teams flex. It's not a bad, it's not a bad problem. Right, but they've gone it's to a like super flex. flex. A super flex is essentially it's a regular flex position, wide receiver, running back, tight end, which everybody's familiar with. But the super flex adds the quarterback, so the quarterback can be played in that flex position. So it's okay. essentially a two quarterback league. But in bye weeks, you don't necessarily have to have a quarterback ah, okay. that you can plug in, right? right? You can plug in any position, any position there. But if you're playing in a two quarterback league, and you don't feel there's enough quarterbacks out there, then you just draft quarterbacks higher. I mean, that's all you do is you just move them up your yeah. draft board, yeah. you know, and you wind up with, you know, I don't know, T.J. Yeldon as one of your running backs. You know, not a starter necessarily, but on, you know, he, he's caught he's sixty like, passes last year. Yeah, I mean, he's your flex guy, right, yeah. in a league like that. The funniest part about it is, if, if I don't get asked, I mean, I know you get asked fantasy football advice via Twitter, and if you want to, yeah, and if, if you guys follow- want to hit me up on on Sunday mornings or Saturday nights or whatever with, oh, with fantasy great. football questions, I answer everybody back. So, oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, uh, I always went with the philosophy. I haven't been asked much. <laughs> but the philosophy I always went with is that okay, if you have trouble selecting a quarterback or it's getting getting down, look at the preseason rankings for well, who's going to have the worst defense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that that'd be a quarterback that you want to take on that team. I mean, if I mean, if, I mean, if it's anybody but you know, or or who plays in a week you know, a week conference, we, right? very, a week, week conference, conference week in a week division. division. Yeah. So there's six of your weeks you're gonna be playing against. Like, for example, the AFC South is a very tough division. Mm-hmm. Even though Luck is so good, defense, defense, yeah, the defensively, mm-hmm. Luck is so good, but you have all of those great defenses yeah. there, um, with the exception of the Colts, right? Um, <laughs> but if you look around there, you got the Texans, Jaguars. And the, uh, the the Titans, who are always very tough. So, Luck, as good as he is, for six of those games, for six of those weeks, you're going to be scratching your head going, he's only got 230 yards this, this, yeah. you know, against the Texans, which is a win, usually. Right. Um, but it's just it's very difficult to, to right. you do want, that, you, if If you're reaching for a quarterback, you want AFC West, AFC North. <laughs> um, you probably want, you want to avoid the NFC North, and you want to avoid... The really? NFC, well, yeah, I mean, the NFC North, I mean, you've got... Rodgers? Yeah, but you've got the Bears, you've got the Vikings, I mean, the, the legitimate defenses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, Rodgers speaks for and stands on his own, Like, he's, right? he's the luck of that. Yeah, division. yeah, he, he stands on his own. I mean, you want to look at, probably, you want to look at the NFC West... I mean, the defenses there aren't great outside of Seattle, and even Seattle's defense isn't Which what it is used to be. Which is weird because they used to have the toughest defenses. Over yeah, there. and they've got high-powered offenses. Yes, they do. So, yeah, I mean... Golf, you know, isn't a bad option in fantasy this year. Mm, I, don't, I can't, I can't trust Ryan Gosling with anything. <laughs> I mean, with the concerns that you have about Gurley and oh, the fact I, that he plays a in, a, in, in a high-powered offense, I mean, he's a guy where if you're going to wait on a quarterback, he's the type of guy that you wait for. Like him and Cousins are probably two guys that you wait for uh, yeah, in the draft. I can see that. I can see. It. If you're you know, don't wait too long. Guys. Don't don't get cocky when it comes to it. I mean, if if you're looking at Cousins and you're like, I'm gonna wait until round 12, don't pick a round because then you, he's gonna get taken around 11, and you're gonna be left with Mitchell Trubisky, like I, like it happened to me last year. And, you know, I said I said to myself, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Cousins. I went into the draft with the guys that I played with, and I I, I was cocky because I was like, oh, these guys aren't in on Cousins. I mean, they barely know who the quarterback for the you know for the Patriots is. So. <laughs>
they don't know a who Cousins is and b that he went from you know Washington to Minnesota. Yeah. If they're drafting him, they think he still plays in Washington. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take him. You know, I'm not going to take a quarterback any earlier than round 12. And Cousins went like the pick before my pick in, in round 12. So uh, I don't know. Mitch Biscuits was my yeah. yeah Mitch, Mitch Biscuits was my my quarterback. Not, not last hateful. Year. Wasn't it wasn't there? terrible. Yeah. No, I mean it wasn't a ter- because I I was high on Biscuits last year. I was I was really high on Trubisky because Nag because of Nagy there. I mean I thought he was going to take that next step. He was he was a guy I was high on. So I mean you, you don't pick around. Essentially, just you know, tell yourself I'm going to wait on a quarterback. And waiting on a quarterback essentially means when everyone in the league has one, that's when you start thinking about taking yours, right? Yep. yep. And yep. specifically when the first guy takes his second, that's uh, when you really need to start worrying about. Okay, now I need a guy. I got to take somebody, yeah. right? Because I'm otherwise I'm going to wind up with Ben Roethlisberger, who I don't want any part of. Or I'm going to wind up with, you know, again, Phillip Rivers, who's not a bad quarterback by any means, but you don't want him as your only option. And if he's your quarterback one, he's your only option. Because you waited too long to take a second one behind him, and you need yeah. a second one behind Rivers. The league that we play in, the couple yeah. of leagues that we play in, are dynasty leagues, yeah. which I love so much because of the, you'll see trades that manifest that you don't normally would because of salary cap. Uh, yeah, so, our, the, so ours is a little bit a little bit different. So you call yeah. it a dynasty league. It's actually a little bit different of a twist on a dynasty league. It's actually a, like a salary cap league. Okay. It's technically right. what it's called because dynasty leagues is just you just keep everybody. Yeah. Right? And there's no real downside to keeping everybody. Whereas with ours, we've got a $200 salary cap that you have to be under by the time the draft is over. Yes. So if you need, you know, if you need to draft three guys to fill out your roster, you've got to have money to do that in the draft. Mm-hmm. So you've got to free up that salary in order to do it. We've got a couple tags that we use in order to, to make that money a little bit more available, like a free keep that we have Le'Veon Bell, as an example, would cost $102. <laughs> if, 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 if Nate Geary were to pull that tag off him, he'd cost him $102. So we have the free keep, which, which is just what it is. You keep him for free. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it, it's it's – it adds a little bit more nuance to it. And we started to see this year, the first offseason that's really happened, is guys are trading draft money. As far as your philosophy goes, because we talk about the salary cap league that we're in, yep. most most of the people that do play the fantasy football, they'll play either the one-year league, yeah. Yahoo, redraft ESPN, leagues, whatever, yeah. redraft. Your philosophy going in, because um, it's always been my, uh, my thought, I want to either be at one of the ends, I don't want to be in the middle. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm in a twelve team league, if I'm drafting sixth, I hate it. I yeah. hate it with a passion of a, <laughs> you know a thousand suns. I want to be either obviously you want to be one or you want to be twelve in that respect. But what is your philosophy going into those one year leagues that you know people are going that they play normally and like okay, are you are you one of those guys? I draft three running backs right off the bat. I don't care mm-hmm. who they are. I need my three running backs right away. Or do you say okay, I'm drafting tenth. All the running backs are gone. I could take an RB two. Yeah, that's up. Or I could take the best wide receiver on the board, or I could take my quarterback now and then just worry about everything else later. Yeah. What's your philosophy going into so, one year league? So I I have a philosophy of in the first five rounds, I come out of the first five rounds with three running backs and two wide receivers. That's my hmm. that's my philosophy when I go into redraft leagues. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what round necessarily they're taken in. Yeah. Because when you get married to a, a position in a round, you start reaching. Right, so if you're the sixth pick and you say, I'm going to go with a running back in the first round, and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, it Kamara, Gurley, um, you know, Elliot, those, uh, Barkley. Elliot, Barkley, those guys are all gone <laughs> when you pick because you're thinking, I'm going to take a running back in the first round. You're thinking one of those guys is going to fall because someone's going to take Julio Jones, someone's going to take Odell Beckham, you know, and get up in there. Um, and then they're gone. Then you wind up with. McCoy. McCoy. Yeah, McCoy is your as <laughs> your running back one, or um, you know a guy in a, in a questionable situation that you're overpaying for, Sony Michelle. You wind up with that type of guy as your running back mm. one. Not that he's a bad running back one. No, you never know. Who but you if you've got the the difference between you know Odell Beckham or Sony Michelle, you're going to take Odell Beckham ten times out of ten. Yeah. But if you say I'm going to take a running back and I'm not even looking at who's on the board at wide receiver. That's where you wind up in trouble. So I always go in first five rounds. I want three running backs, two wide receivers. I don't take I don't take a tight end before round six. I refuse to do it because I think tight ends. If you're not getting if you if you've committed to the philosophy that I commit to, which is you know three and two in the first five rounds, you're not going to get Kelsey. You're not going to get Ertz. After Kelsey, after Ertz, 
it's all roll the dice. It doesn't matter. They all Plug wind up within. They all wind up within twenty points of each other by the time the season's over. So it's really a <laughs> marginal difference. Kelsey and Hurts, the only two guys now. Well, I'm not a Gronk. Kind of yeah, guys. I mean, even Gronk last year, I think there were a lot of questions about what he was going to be. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's Kelsey, it's Ertz, and then it's you know, insert name here at that point at the tight end position, and you might as well wait and take. You know, I would rather wait and take. Um, you know, Jarvis Landry. I'd rather take Jarvis Landry than anyone other than Ertz and, and Kelsey. Mm. Or I'd rather take, you know, Allen Robinson as yeah. opposed to one of those two guys. I mean, ha- at this point, to be honest with you, I'd rather take Zay Jones than anybody other than Kelsey and Ertz because, you know, he Zay Jones is going to be a legitimate wide receiver three pushing wide receiver two yeah. in, in this year. So that those are the types of guys that you start to look for. So then... You know, and then it's 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 um, it's quarterback. Usually, I try to wait until like round ten ish, um, because really? I'm a little bit more um, I'm a little bit more cavalier with my quarterback position. Yeah. Um, obviously, in our dynasty league, I have Rodgers, so I'm not too worried about that. Another dynasty league um, that I play in, I've got um, you got Wentz, Wentz, you? yeah, Wentz and T- Trubisky in that league. So I mean, I'm, I'm pretty set at the quarterback position. But if I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna go get Cousins. I'm gonna go get. Um, Wentz probably this year will be a target of mine. Um, you know, guys like that, Goff, I'll, I'll be okay with that because they're going to wind up, you know, they're going to wind up with monster weeks. They're going to wind up with le- weeks where they're not great, but they're not going to be Ben Roethlisberger, right? They're not going to be yeah. Roethlisberger. I'm going to have to stream him on home games and play somebody else on a win games. And then towards the end of the draft, I'm looking for rookies that I think are in good situations, and I'm looking for handcuffs. And I'm also targeting other people's handcuffs because yes, they turn into trade bait down the line, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. That. I mean, you're targeting if you see a guy that took last year in a, in a, one of the leagues that I was in, somebody took Le'Veon Bell in the second round. Not a bad pick because you didn't want to take him in the first. He lasted. You took him in the second. Not terrible. Got to be round eleven, and James Conner is still on the board. Mm. I mean, that's your fault, man. I mean that that's your bad for letting that for letting that handcuff sit there for that long. So I drafted him. When it came to week three or four, I traded him and he made him pay for it. Yeah. You know, so Gurley is a guy you look at this year. Yeah. Go out and get his handcuffs as early as you can. Yeah. Because Gurley's not right. It doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like he's going to get the workload that he got the last couple seasons. No. Um, they may even try to use him more as a wide receiver. But I, I'm going to say that real yeah. quick that the genius. Like that, yeah, the genius <laughs> that you had last year was when that whole story broke with Hunt, and everybody ran to the waiver wire to get Spencer Ware. Yeah, Spencer Ware, Damian Williams. Baby. You, or the what? You guys got to get Williams. Yeah, like, you literally told everybody. Yeah. Like, I went out and got him in all you my got leagues, him. Yeah. and then I went into the league chats and I said, if you're in other leagues other than ours, yeah, <laughs> go get Damian Williams. <laughs> Everyone, and I was one of the, I was one of the guys that I, I didn't bid enough for him. Yeah, because in, in the, in the so oh, I, I went huge on him. Yeah. yeah, I went huge on him. Um, but I think, was, I think I, I think I wiped myself out. I think I went like forty dollars or something. Oh, you did. Yeah, you did. I went huge on him. But it was, it was you were making, you were making the run. It was interesting though that how, did, how did that manifest? Like everyone thought because it was Spencer Ware, and then Hunt came in, and Spencer Ware lost the job. But you think Spencer Ware would come back in? What, what made you go with Williams over Ware? So what, I, what I do is I, I tend to look at skill set of the guy that's getting replaced. Right, and okay. Damian Williams is much more of a versatile running back than Spencer Ware. Mm-hmm. Spencer Ware is kind of a between the tackles, he'll catch a ball here and there kind of thing. But Damian Williams is a much younger. Um, he had just gotten drafted by Andy Reid, so Reid clearly liked him, right? And he had a similar skill set to Cream Hunt, so so okay. that to me kind of led me to Damian Williams as the guy. Um, and it, it never hurts to be the guy that goes left when everyone else goes right. Right, so if you knew that Spencer Ware was going to be the focal point, Spencer Ware just come back from injury, right? Yeah. I mean, he's had a career of being injured. Yeah. And they're going to make a, they're making a legitimate playoff push. They're going to need a running back. So if Ware's iffy, Damian Williams is your guy. I mean, it was the same thing. Um, I was in on Austin Eckler last year yeah. because you know Melvin Gordon coming off an injury, he had an injury history. He's a guy that's never played a full season, and they've got wow. a legitimately talented back behind him. He's gonna he's gonna get looks on his own. Yeah. Now if if Gordon goes down because he's already getting looks on his own, he's gonna be the bell cow. Um, it's all about kind of looking at skill set. Guys that get drafted, 
tend to hold a lot of value with the coaches, right? Because that means the coaches really like them. So if you got a guy that, you know, is a handcuff and you've got two options, one was drafted and one maybe was an inherited type of guy or one was maybe a free agent depth kind of kind of guy that you look at, that's the guy you want to look at. That That's why in, in for the Bills, I'm looking at if I'm in a dynasty league or I'm in a league um, where I need a handcuff and I get McCoy, my handcuff for McCoy is probably going to be Singletary. Not Gore. Not Gore. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know, because if you're if if you and and it's not Yeldon because Yeldon's never been a, a, a bell cow back in it's his still career. Quite, it's still, Yeldon holds value, like you said, in the one league where if you have a PPR yeah. at one point. Yep. I mean, the guy caught about sixty passes last, yeah. around sixty passes last year, but it was one of those. He, Yeldon's even a question mark to make the roster. Right. I mean, if we're going to sidestep real quick, but you want to let he's not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not a question mark for me, but yeah, go ahead. No, for some, yeah. for some, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Singletary would be the guy to get. Uh, what do you think about rookie running backs? Like, it's always a, well, rolling the dice on that. Yeah, I mean, rookie running backs, you've got to find a really good situation. Like, Josh Jacobs, everyone's really high situation. on Josh Jacobs. I'm, I See, I'm not that high on him. Well, I mean, you who are they going to the wep- throw the ball to, though? Well, the weapons that they have. What weapons do they have? Brown. Okay. And? Okay. You said weapons. Oh. <laughs> so And Jacobs, you know, again, he's a rookie. The, the, Rookies, okay. If if you're looking for a rookie, like we have a rookie pick in our dynasty league every year, mm-hmm. we have a rookie draft. I trade my rookie draft pick every year, um, but if I was gonna take a rookie dra- a rookie pick, and, and if you're in a situation to take rookie picks, look for guys who pass block well, because the key to getting on the field as a rookie is pass blocking. Mm-hmm. If you can pass block, look at um, look at Saquon Barkley, look at Ezekiel Elliott. The reasons that they never came off the field is they both came into the league as very good pass blockers, yes. pass protectors. So if you're on the field as a pass blocker, you're going to block, 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 you're going to release, and that's where your PPR comes from because you're going to be the dump-off guy. And that's where that value starts to increase itself. So Well, you have um, two schools of thought, though. You, yep. you have the Elliott Barkley guys that, yep. that can pick up a blitz if they need to and then they leak out. Yep. Or you have the Kamara McCaffrey guys that are just designed in the routes anyway. Sure. They're just they're not even meant to pass block. They're sure. just designed in the routes. So. Yeah, but I mean, think, you think about Elvin Kamara, right? So his value was stunted the last two years because of Ingram. So because they had an established guy there, it didn't matter that he was – I mean, he was still a, a monster, right? Yeah. Um, and, and same thing with McCaffrey. If, if you're looking for a situation where you're going to take a, a rookie running back, um, take a guy that's, that's going to be on the field a lot. And I don't think anyone I – mean, nobody did with Kamara his first year. Nobody thought he was going to be on the field a lot, right? I mean, even in our dynasty league, which I feel like we're pretty good about taking the right guys, yeah. he was drafted, dropped, picked up, dropped, and then I finally picked him up, right? So he was one of those guys where I don't think he anybody thought he was going to do what he did. McCaffrey was drafted high because he was drafted high in, in the regular NFL draft. But, I mean, if you're looking at the rookies this year, the guys that you want to go get, obviously Josh Jacobs – um, is the number one guy just because of volume. I mean, he's just going to be – he's the only running back in Oakland right now, yeah. legitimately. So um, he's the guy that you want to go get. And then from there, it's really what guys are in the best situation. So rookies, again, I mean, it's it's a it's, a, it's situation. It's understanding the coach, coach usage, and it's can you block. Because if you can block, you're going to see the field. Mm. And because they're not going to put their quarterbacks in bad, bad situations just to give the rookie a couple extra carries, right? So – that's kind of how I approach rookie rookie. rookie I hope backs. you guys have a pen and pad writing this down. Yeah, I mean, or just rewind. They have the re- rewind. <laughs> just drag it feature. Backwards. Yeah, I mean, which is one of the nice things about your show as opposed to mine is mine's live, so you just rewind yours. You always got to throw it in there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> like I have to do this in one shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You guys got post production. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.